welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Antony Nantosha with UATV. Despite all the efforts of Ukraine's authorities and civil society and of the international community, the situation with the Ukrainians illegally imprisoned in Russia remains dire. Ukrainian filmmaker Alexin Sov is on hunger strike for over two months now. Volodymyr Baluch, another Ukrainian on hunger strike in Russia, was recently denied a conditional release. One more Ukrainian, Stanislav Klich, illegally held in Russia as well, has been transferred from jail to a mental health facility a few weeks ago. So what can be done to make the Kremlin release its prisoners? To talk more about the situation, we're joined in the studio today by Maria Gurieva. She's a spokesperson of Amnesty International in Ukraine. Hello and thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. So as I have already mentioned, the situation is getting worse and worse every day. And the Kremlin denies having political prisoners from Ukraine held illegally, detained and held in Russia even though the international community acknowledges the fact that there are political prisoners in Russia, even though Ukrainian authorities acknowledge the fact that there are political prisoners held in Russia, what else can be done? Uh, Russia does consider all the prisoners as Russian citizens and therefore uh, doesn't feel like actually doing anything, doesn't feel like um, following the pressure from international community. And that's a quite an issue indeed. It's very difficult to put any kind of pressure on Russia. Um, however, we do work on that. Uh, we do raise the issue of uh, prisoners illegally uh, imprisoned for uh, political reasons in Russia. Uh, we do raise it in the level of UN, we do raise it among international diplomats and politicians, and we believe that political pressure can make difference. The difficult thing here is that um, Whatever happens with prisoners in Russia, with Ukrainian citizens being held there in, in, due to political reasons, is all a matter of political decisions. And therefore, it is so difficult to actually reach any kind of result. Political decisions meaning not only the Kremlin, but for example, Ukrainian government as well, right? As well uh, as any government that actually can put any kind of pressure. And it's very much depends on Ukrainian society that has its you know, force to keep this issue, uh, to keep this issue in media, to keep this issue for foreign community. Uh, like we know that there are so many public actions made all over Ukraine and all over the world, mm -hmm, actually. Mm -hmm. And those are small steps that actually can influence the situation and can show to politicians that the issue of such prisoners is actually important for the whole society. Okay, what about the uh, Crimean Tatar? Uh, community that is um, based or the, that is hosted uh, on the illegally annexed Crimean Peninsula right now. All of them are being severely prosecuted for also for clearly political prisoners. What about that? Uh, Crimean Tatar community is now in uh, a terribly difficult situation in Crimea in general. They are denied access to basic you know, human rights, mm -hmm. as freedom of expression, freedom of speech, uh, freedom of assembly. And uh, many Crimean Tatars are in prisons now due to political reasons indeed. Uh, one of the cases that we've been following since uh, for several years already is the case of uh, Hizbut Tahrir and yeah. uh, Emir Hussein Kuku, mm -hmm. uh, one of uh, so-called members of this organizations. Organization so-called again because uh, the prosecution that now going on is uh, is a sham trial. Mm -hmm. um, he's now on hunger strike in support of Alexei Sov. He's been on hunger strike for over 20 days, and he uh, refuses. Um, uh, to use um, injections that are necessary to support There's been his information condition. that his health has critically deteriorated at one of the points. Is he better now? Is there any information on his health at all? Uh, all information that we have about his health we receive from his lawyer and from himself while he can uh, deliver some letters mm -hmm. um, from the uh, from the place with, where he has been held, uh, his health does deteriorate obviously because he he doesn't consume any you know any food. Um, and uh, what is even more disturbing is that doctors that made medical examination they provide very unclear um, unclear information about his condition. Mm -hmm. For instance, as we know from Emerson Kuku, uh, first. Um, Conclusions of doctors were very negative, saying that his health is in quite bad condition. And when he made 
uh, when he went to examination again to hospital, the results were suddenly very well, very good ones. Mm -hmm. So this is something that should be further investigated and the lawyer is aiming to actually get access to uh, to the results of these examinations to make sure that actually doctors are, well, let's say, uh, perform the duties correctly and actually deliver the right information. The but lack of access it, it, is a, a um, normal problem, as I can see that, for even the Ukrainian ombudsman or the representatives of Ukrainian authorities, because none of them has been granted access to visit any of Ukrainian political prisoners. How can we change that? What's, what's being done to change that? Uh, our uh, ombudsman and representatives uh, were trying to reach Oleksensov, other prisoners, and really it's really difficult to do. Uh, Emir Senkuku is uh, regularly visited by lawyer because the uh, trial is ongoing, so he mm -hmm. can, um, mm -hmm. there is access to, to him. Uh, what can be done with this is also a matter of political uh, decisions, unfortunately. And unfortunately for Russia, it is just as easily done uh, it's up to decision of absolutely um, concrete people to whether to grant access or not to grant, whether mm -hmm. to release people or not to release. And that's what it makes it so difficult. But uh, it's very important that Ukrainian authorities, uh, international organizations, uh, local organizations, that all try, they all do their best to actually mm -hmm. get this access. And sometimes it works out. There's been information appearing that the negotiations about the prisoner swamp are on the way in between Russian authorities and Ukrainian authorities. Is this true? And if they are, how far successful are they? Uh, we are not included in any sort of negotiations, mainly because they are, well, obviously political ones. So we can only follow what mm -hmm. we get from news and from official sources. Uh, there was such information indeed, and um, there were some uh, messages which were quite optimistic about the results of these negotiations. Uh, we hope it will lead to some certain result. We hope that it will be able to release at least some of people that are illegally held there. But at this moment, we don't see any, any result as, as for now, but mm -hmm. we're still looking mm -hmm. for it. Okay, well, nowadays social media is a powerful tool of information, of de delivering the information into the civil society or the mass. And uh, me, being an active user of one of the social medias, uh, uh, I know that there has been information appearing on Facebook that Oleg Sensov has died just before his birthday. It appeared just before his birthday and it spread quickly and it had a huge reaction upon it. Obviously, it was a fake because Oleg Sinsov is still alive, but the reaction was wild. What if this happens in real life? What if the worst happens and one of the political prisoners or the, one of the most famous political prisoners from Ukraine of the Kremlin, meaning Oleg Sinsov, actually passes away? I think even though people react so widely on such messages, uh, hardly anyone realizes that, that this can happen any moment. Like it can happen like now, anytime. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it so painful for, for all civil society to realize that it can happen and there is hardly, we can do, there's hardly any result we can reach by our own effort. Mm -hmm. So there is always such a long term things we are doing. We are going to international conferences, we are meeting embassies, we are meeting diplomats, we are making public actions, but there are still, you know, long term things that should get their effect in future. And now there is so many people in a real risk of, of their health being uh, really damaged or their life being in danger. And, uh, and again, their destiny is in the hands of politi politicians, very um, obvious ones. But what kind of a position would Russia end up in if this happens? It's hard to speculate, actually, with everything that happens now. Mm -hmm. We would like to believe that it will be, would have, would have sobering effect, and all human rights violations would suddenly stop because oh, yeah. Russian government would suddenly realize that human have an <laughs> that human life is important, and there is nothing more valuable than that. But um, it's hard to believe that it will happen because human rights violations in Russia is so grave and so widespread. It's, there's a no, not only uh, Ukrainians being and held so in prison. You know? Pardon? And, and so, so tolerated, tolerated, obviously. And so uh, not noticed by, um, by big parts of society mm -hmm. that it's hard to imagine that it will have, you know, real influence. 
But again, um, people that now went on hunger strike, they did it not for themselves. They did it for, for their communities. Yeah. They did it for for world. They tr uh, tried to attract world attention to what's going on in certain countries, what's going on in t with certain people. And that's why they demand the release of so many people, because they know they know that they will be in there unfairly. Mm -hmm. So that's political statement. And uh, for them, it is important to do what they can to, to save the statement, to be able to um, to hold this statement, mm -hmm. while for us it is important to do all we can from our side to actually release them and to stop all these human rights violations that happen now. Well, we all are here at UATV are very hopeful that all, yes, the political, <laughs> all of the political prisoners from Ukraine currently held in Russia will be released and will be home safe and sound. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. here. That was Maria Goriva. She's a spokesperson of Amnesty International Ukraine. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more.